So we have an exclusive hands-on preview from IGN for Atomic Heart. I've seen quite a few people talking about this recently, and it's mainly because the game was first announced back in 2018, and they've just been back and forth with development and everything like that, but they've finally shown some gameplay and stuff off, and there is now a release date, which I believe is February 21st this year. So we're a little over a month away from this game's release. And that's providing there's no more delays or anything like that. This video, I believe, was about a month ago when it was posted. But after this, we've got like a one minute clip. I believe it's from GameSpot that shows off. I think it's like a gameplay review trailer sort of thing. So we'll watch this one. Then we'll jump over to the GameSpot one. I'm going to have sound on this one. And then I believe the other one is just music. So I'll just mute it on the off chance that there might be copyright or something related. And if you guys want to watch these videos without me talking over the top of them, without me pausing them, they will both be linked in the description because this is essentially like a reaction to this footage to see what the game's about. So I need to pause it at times and I need to talk over the top of it so that you guys get my opinion. So this is the exclusive hands-on preview, the first video of two from IGN, and let's begin. Atomic Heart wears its influences on its sleeve. It's a graphic first-person shooter packed with superpower-like abilities and owes a lot to classics of the genre Bioshock and Half-Life. However, that doesn't mean it hasn't got many of its own unique ideas and surprises also hidden up that same sleeve. And from playing a considerable amount of Munfish's debut, there's a lot to be excited about. Okay, so straight away, from the little clip we've had before this little intro bit, it's uh it's quite graphic like like graphical if, if you want to call it that it looks like a big big game so let's continue with this atomic heart lulls you into familiar territory straight off the bat Ooh. albeit in a very unfamiliar world it's open i like the look of this obvious cues from bioshock infinite's masterful introduction to columbia as you take a leisurely trip for a peaceful alternate history soviet city thanks to the big brains at the fictional facility 3826 robots have been integrated into society and help relieve the public from everyday stresses and labor the calm is short-lived however as inevitably the ai turns not so friendly and the game begins in earnest Okay, it, it looks there, and sounds decent. From several different points in Atomic Heart to get a proper feel of what it has to offer, consistently being surprised by what came next. It's not the straight-up corridor shooter some may envisage, nor a sprawling open world full of nooks to explore, or a puzzle-filled brain teaser. It's all uh, of those things and more. What the is that? of Atomic Heart is impressive, as you'll make your way through its many distinct and large sci-fi complexes over the course of its 20-hour-plus campaign. Atomic this game looks huge. This analog structurally would likely be Halo Infinite, an open world littered with mobs of enemies and linear story dungeons to dip in and out of. These dungeons are where the majority of main missions lie and comprise of learning more about the facility, the people behind it, and what exactly has gone wrong there. You battle through sections patrolled by rogue AI units before more often than not facing off against a challenging boss. Atomic Heart isn't reinventing the wheel in this regard, but definitely adds its own flair into the mix. Greetings, comrades, and welcome to the All-Soviet Exhibition Center! What the fuck are you babbling on about? <laughs> One of the first things like that, that struck me about Atomic Heart is its thoroughly wow. distinctive art style. It's a gorgeous game packed with lush forests, eye-catching architecture, and Jesus. all manner of bonkers-looking machinery. It's Wait, hold up. Look at the scope of this, like the scale of this stuff. I don't know if it's like the field of view or something like that, but this stuff looks massive. Look at this. Art style. It's a gorgeous game packed with lush forests, eye-catching Look at that. Yeah, eye-catching architecture is something you could call it. Architecture and all manner of bo And look at that. It's gigantic. Bonkers looking machinery. It's noticeably vast, endlessly creative, and frankly hard to take in all at once as you drive, zip line, swim, and more often than not, run away from killer robots. These robots are each a visual delight to take in, but rarely are you ever given the opportunity to do so as razor blades, electric pulses and flying kicks are hurled at you with frightening regularity. They each emphasise the intelligence in AI, never shying away from a battle or afraid of showing off their varied arsenals. Of course, there are large... 
I, I hate to do it. I, I don't like pausing loads. I, I, I like to pause every now and then. But that little, that last clip did look a little bit clunky with the frame rate. And obviously, it's going to look way worse for you guys watching this because the video IGN uploaded is already compressed by YouTube and then it gets compressed even further when I go and do my editing, rendering, and upload it and stuff. Larger scale enemies and boss battles are plenty, both in linear story sections and in arenas across the open world. They often provide challenge and spectacle in equal measure, as they unleash one devastating attack after another while you chip away at their monstrous health bars. Atomic Heart isn't afraid to switch up its combat either, frequently flitting between frantic firefights against onrushing hordes to slower, more deliberate melee duels. It's an exciting way to keep you on your toes and a testament to the work Munfish has done to maintain balance. First and foremost, it's a shooter, and has an impressive collection of firearms to back that up. These range from the relentlessly chattering AK-47 okay. to RPGs. Then there's the more experimental end of the spectrum, reserved for guns that blast out electric bombs to something that can only be described as a large metal pole that fires out whirling blades that carve up enemies before returning to your hand. On the whole, shooting feels competent if not spectacular, fitting somewhere in between the rustic feel of Fallout and the snappier gunplay of Call of Duty. Speaking of your hand, an essential part of the Atomic Heart kit is the glove a sci-fi piece of gear that grants elemental powers, using the electrified shock to halt mechanical foes in their stride before following up with a flurry of bullets is a surefire way of causing a lethal circuit malfunction. Similarly, some of the telekinesis attacks are glorious to wield as you lift a group of enemies into the air before introducing them back to the ground with a violent thud. That is that is it's sick. a joy to play with, and even more fun to experiment with. Freezing an enemy before shattering through their brittle metal shell with a massive axe is always a good time. A stellar example of the hand-to-hatchet combat is one of Atomic Heart's earliest missions. You're thrown into the deep end as you're taught how to survive in the dark corridors of the facility's many underground labs. Atomic Heart is not an easy game. It has been designed first and foremost as a hardcore shooter experience. Although difficulty options are available, it doesn't take many hits or kicks from a mustachioed android to take you down. Evading and knowing when to attack takes timing and an ability to learn and read your enemy. Thankfully, more powerful charged attacks are signalled by a glowing red ring moments before impact. Miss it though, and you'll be on the floor scrambling for a health kit. This patient back and forth melee combat will be familiar to anyone who has played almost any action game over the past decade, but nonetheless, it's a surprise to see it pop up in a first person shooter. It's much less forgiving or quick hitting as something like Dying Light or Far Cry, instead making each heavy swing meaningful rather than relying on a flurry of hits to get out of a sticky situation. Hold on, I, I need to pause it there. One question, why do they keep blurring the quest at the top left corner? And not only that, they've mentioned Fallout, Far Cry, uh, there's a couple of games I don't remember, <laughs> and Call of Duty as well. This game though, it looks insane. The different areas you can explore, the like the scale of the buildings and the architecture in the game, it, it looks mad. But let's continue with this and we'll talk about it more at the end. It's almost survival horror in nature, with moments from the aforementioned early level leaning into this. Its dark hallways are lit only by the occasional flicker of light, and the oppressive silence broken by the sound of smashing glass, as bloodthirsty robots practice what they're going to do with your skull. As I hesitantly made my way through, I couldn't help but be reminded of the first time I entered Rapture, or some of Half-Life 2's scarier moments. Another Valve game Atomic Heart draws influence from is Portal. Not from any of its robot designs, but the surprising revelation that puzzles play such a considerable part. Test sites are puzzle boxes lasting anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to complete. They're essentially like abandoned that. lab facilities requiring you to put combat skills through a cerebral exam. For example, use your glove's shock ability to magnetise nodes, which in turn move platforms to help you on your way. The puzzles I've tried haven't been the most challenging, but provide a welcome change of pace nonetheless, and come with the added bonus of granting valuable upgrades upon completion. Weapons and abilities can be modified and upgraded throughout a process that's essential in taking down the many threats. Robots are controlled by a central AI that is- Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I need to have a look at that. Active cameras, navigation. Okay. 
potential AI that is always on the lookout for you. Ways of combating its glare include avoiding its cameras, either by disabling them or making the glove perform its best gravity gun impression to hurl objects as a distraction. Make a wrong move and you'll quickly find yourself overcome by enemies. As the facility sends them out straight from the production line to attack, the more the alert level is raised. It really evokes the feeling of going up against an intelligent, aggressive global ecosystem that acts as a unit rather than occasional pockets of activity. The hours I've spent with Atomic Heart have left me yearning for more. It's an engrossing world to get lost in, with dynamic combat and inspired art and enemy design. I have a few doubts over whether the main story will deliver a tale worthy of such a stellar location, and I've seen some heavy-handed writing and performances that leave a little to be desired. Then there's the nauseating forward roll animation that had my stomach churning on more than one Ooh. occasion. Yeah, I, I don't like see it. these gripes were ever enough to fully take away from all the exciting things I found myself engaging with a Along the way though. Time will tell if Atomic Heart lives up to its lofty aspirations, but it certainly makes a very strong first impression. For more on Atomic Heart, check out this boss battle gameplay or a deep Hold up, so there's an entire boss fight gameplay. I, I think we might have to go over that in another video. But yeah, this it, it does look in areas. I don't know if it was the recording or like anything like that, but it looks as though in a couple of areas the uh the frames did drop. There was a little bit of like performance issues. But like that creature at the end that just opens up its face and is laser beaming people in half and the size of some of the, the things they've created in the game world and the weaponry, this game does look insane. And my fingers are crossed for a Feb 21st release because with this and a handful of other games, we are looking for a very, very busy first half of 2023. Now, just quickly before we end this one, let's jump over to that GameSpot video and we'll take a look at their gameplay trailer thing. So this is the gameplay reveal trailer. This one was uploaded seven days ago at the time of me recording. It's 4K RTX. I am only watching in 1080p and I only upload in 1080p. So it's not going to be true 4K and the compression and everything again. And this one, because I played the first few seconds to see if there was music and stuff, there is music in this one. So I do have it muted, but let's have a look at this. And obviously there's no talking, so I can talk over the top of it. And I really, really like the look of that river. I can't believe how big this game looks. Look at that, that's just like one building interior. What is that? Did we see that in the other trailer? I'm not sure about the... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about the liquids coming out of our hands. I, I do like the telekinesis and stuff, though. Look at that. Like, what are you... Is that a flying car? That's one of the bosses, isn't it? I like the look of the like the enemies and stuff in this. No, that, that was just creepy. Some of this stuff is really weird. <laughs> There's just different liquids floating around. But yeah, that was the gameplay reveal trailer. Obviously not much to it. It's only a minute long. But overall, as I said like with the previous video, this game does look insane. And I have heard from quite a few different people that the game looked to be in a bit of a, a mess, basically, because it was first announced in 2018, and I think it's had multiple delays since then. But now we're getting to see some gameplay. It looks as though the game, like depending on how much more they've done to it, it looks as though what they've got built up in terms of its technical side of things I would say it looks ready to release, maybe a tiny bit more polish on the frame rate and stuff, unless that was the video. But what we're going to do is leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about Atomic Heart in the comments. And to check out this video if you want to see other content on the channel. I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.